Good evening, Grey9. Uh, today in this video, we're going to look at tectonic theory and specifically look at plate boundaries. What happens when these plates that are moving and rubbing against each other and crashing into each other and being torn apart from each other? What's happening at these areas that are uh, that it's forming the world around us? Because they're fairly significant things. Let's get started. So, here's our Walt. Now we're going to look at well, what are the different types of plate boundaries and how they interact. And things that you should be able to do is remember your three main types and then explain the consequences of those different boundaries interacting. Now, I don't just mean tell me what could happen, but the why these could happen. Remember, explain requires you to add a bit of why to your answer. And you know, the reason is simple the fact is that a large theory like tectonic theory can explain a lot of different phenomena that we see around us every day. Um, in science, for example, we try to unify theories if um, we notice that they work on the same things. Um, there's, for example, a, a big push to unify different uh, forces in, in physics so that we have one theory that explains all the four forces that we see uh, and because they act very similar but we've got to figure out well how does it all behave or how what causes all four of these things to happen and, and you'll find that as you go through further studies that some very large theories can explain quite a lot now uh, we've talked about plates before and we said that there's about eight major and there's a few minor plates, uh, but the thing is, uh, they come in a couple of types, or that the parts of them come in different types. The main differences are thickness and density. Now, a uh, plate could have some oceanic plate on it, and it could have some continental plate on it. Okay? Now, a single plate can have both things. Now, uh, let's treat it, take Australia. If you need to pause the video, go find your map of uh, all the different plates and have a look at the Australian plate. Hopefully you got that there. Now, the continental plate region, well, that's the part we live on, and the part we're standing on right now. Um, but you can see there the plate boundary goes a bit further. Like if, if we look to the east, it goes all the way to New Zealand. Well, that bit between Australia and New Zealand is not continental plate, it's oceanic plate. Okay? It's got a different uh, thickness to it, it's got a different density to it. Uh, so a single plate can have different regions that are made of different things and what regions kind of clash together will tell us about it. So oceanic plate, pretty straightforward, it's got the ocean above it. It will be thinner, but it will be very dense in comparison. And oceanic crusts tend to subduct, okay? So if you have an oceanic crush, oceanic plate crash into something, uh, or an oceanic plate region crash into another plate, it's likely to sink, it's going to subduct is the word that we're going to use, okay? Uh, feel free to remember sink if it helps you, but subduct is the good word to be using. Continental crust has land on it, because it's got continents. Uh, sometimes they have a little bit of ocean over it, like just the sort of edges of it, and they tend to go over the top of other plates. So continents go over the top, oceans go underneath. Pretty straightforward. And these are all going to cause tectonic features. And tectonic is referring to Earth. In this case, remember earthquakes. Uh, we talked about all the movement of the Earth. And tectonic features refer to any deformations. And you might go, oh, deformed, that sounds bad. But a deformation in this case just means a change. Uh, a mountain range is a deformation because it wasn't there before these plate boundaries started to interact. Volcanoes, uh, rift valleys, all these things that we see around us, all the interesting stuff, likely come from the movement of the Earth. Some things might come from other things and other processes, like uh, weathering and erosion that we learned about last year, but those big things, mountains, volcanoes, rifts, this is all about um, these tectonic features, these tectonic processes. So here are your three, and I'd recommend that you have the arrows that go along with it. So you can see here divergent boundaries. Divergent means that the arrows, the plates are moving apart. To diverge means to spread. The opposite, convergent. Convergent, the two plates are coming together. Transform boundaries, they're going past each other. So if I, if my two hands here are 
plate boundaries, so you can't quite see because it's quite dark. Uh, if one goes down, the other will go up. Okay. Oh, and we've triggered over to the next map. So here's another example of a plate movement map. Uh, you've seen similar in class, and I've provided some to you in the worksheets. And you can see, say, here where Australia and Antarctica are separating, uh, they're divergent, but here where the Pacific and the Australian plate, they're coming together. Uh, here we have the Pacific plate uh, for the bottom part of New Zealand coming in towards the Australian plate but the Australian plate is not moving in that direction. Uh, South America and Nazca plate coming together, but South America and the African plates separating apart. So all these different plate boundaries are doing different things, and that's helping to cause a lot of these features around the world. Now you've been provided with three maps, the earthquake locations, volcanic locations, and tectonic plates and their movements. Um, what I want you to do is look across those three and see what patterns, what commonalities can you identify and think about some of the stuff you might have learnt in a geography class. What geological features have you seen in those regions that might link to those types of boundaries? Now we're going to go through some of these, but see if you can think of some of the stuff you, you know about the world and see, well, oh, there's this here so that might tie to this type of boundary. I'll give you a few minutes, uh, pause the video, Go have a look at your maps, have a bit of a ponder, and then we'll get back into it. Okay, so, hopefully you've had a look at that. I know it's a very hard thing to do, but trying to do your own looking for patterns is a really great skill to have. So let's have a look at some of these. So, as we said, divergent boundaries means the plates are separating. Now we can see here we've got our convection current underneath. We've got up to here our little volcano or our ridge and the plates are spreading. Right, now over here they're converging but we don't care about that, we're just going to care about this bit in the middle. Uh, and so new molten material comes up to fill the gap and as we said that's a volcano. Uh, this is a great map that looks at the age of the oceanic crust. You can see here this red, these red areas, they are the youngest earth and then orange then green yellow then green. Uh, you get some blues over here, these ones are very old, they've been spread apart for quite some time. Um, but you can see areas where new stuff is being made, these cracks along here. And we can see stuff where they're being old or being destroyed, these sort of bluish regions. Now Iceland is a fantastic example of a divergent boundary because it's one of the few places on the world where the divergent boundary is on land. And you can see here this boundary separating Iceland apart and goes right past the capital of Reykjavik. And you can see here, here's the capital. And hey, look at this fantastic light show uh, they have there uh, every so often. Um, they have lots of volcanoes. Sometimes those volcanoes stop air travel in Europe because they're quite... Um, quite active and they're quite uh, volatile, putting out lots of gas. Uh, however, yeah, if you want to see a volcano and you don't mind the cold and you don't mind some of the, the uh, possibly weird foods, go visit Iceland, lovely people, and have a look at some volcanoes. They're sort of introverted, they're a bit like me, so that's why I think I like them. I used to uh, party with some uh, Danish and Norwegians and Icelandic people back in my uni days. Great, great people to talk with. Uh, but, you know, fantastic volcanoes. Go have a look. You'll probably have some fun. Now, convergent boundaries, remember, the opposite. Now, with divergent, I didn't mention oceanics and continental crust, because it doesn't matter. If they spread apart, you get a volcano. That's it. Nice and easy. But with these convergent boundaries, it does matter what comes together, and so we have three different types of convergent boundaries. We have continent-continent collisions, continent-oceanic crust collisions, and then ocean-to-ocean -ocean collisions. Uh, sometimes the text will call these destructive boundaries, because often it will, it will, it always does, sorry. It will result in plates being destroyed as they get pushed underneath each other. So here's two continents. Um, when they come together, one of them will get pushed under the other, and you can see here as it gets pushed down, it's pushed underneath the ground, 
it's going to end up being subducted it's going to be drawn down into the the molten part of the earth and it will be destroyed now a cc collision so we're going to call it continent continent cc hope we can see that uh, causes mountains and the way i remember it cc's kind of look like mountains the triangle shapes okay so cc's cause mountains okay this gets subducted this bit gets pushed up Now here's a fantastic example of a CC collision in the Himalayan mountains and you might go well what's the plate that comes in from the south and what's the plate that comes from the north? Uh, hopefully you can sort of look on your map or clue in. Well it's the Indian plate coming in from the south and is the Asian plate or the Eurasian plate from the north because Europe and Asia all sort of merged together on that one plate there. And because of that, it is causing the mountains to rise, and Mount Everest gets taller every year because of this process. Now, our next one is when a continent gets crushed into an oceanic. Now, oceanic crust is denser, so it will get pulled down. Right? As it gets pulled down, this is called subduction. Uh, as it heats up, all those uh, volatile organic materials on here end up getting cooked uh, evaporating into gases carbon dioxide for example and that rises forces its way through the crust and it ends up leading towards volcanoes uh, and this lava then follows up through okay so when you get a continent or a co collision okay, we end up causing a volcano okay and it goes through subduction you've got to remember that word whenever you're explaining co collisions or any sort of um, conversion boundaries there because they're always going to have some subduction happening uh, the andes mountains down the western coast of south america uh, fantastic examples so there are a lot of still very active volcanoes they do erupt uh, and the nazcar plate that we saw that map previously well, that's subducting underneath uh, the south american plate and that's leading to these volcanoes. And our last one are OO collisions, oceanic to oceanic, and it will cause one to subduct, but it causes what's called a trench because they both sort of get pulled down a little bit. Um, the other doesn't get kind of pushed over the top. It doesn't really cause it to rise above the ground. Uh, the Mariana Trench is a wonderful example of an oceanic oceanic trench collision where that boundary is. Um, and you get some really freaky things down there. So uh, here's the trench off the coast of the uh, Philippines here. And then here's some creepy sea creature found deep in the Mariana Trench, just to give you a bit of nightmare fuel there, guys. And the last type of boundaries are transform boundaries. Now, that just means they're going to slide past each other, kind of like... Um, Oh, I don't know, like stand up and just slide your feet along the ground. That's a transform boundary. Sometimes it's easy to slide. You don't get much problem. There's no friction. Sometimes, though, it sticks a bit. And then you might feel that your foot kind of jerks along. Well, when that, the same thing happens in the earth. Okay, That sudden release, that sudden movement, all that stored elastic energy, that build up as it tries to shove past, okay, uh, it ends up eventually giving way and bang, you get an earthquake. Things shape. You won't get uh, volcanoes, you won't get mountains. Uh, you'll get the occasional weird dip in the ground, but it won't be a, as deep as a trench. Uh, but you will get a lot of earthquakes. Now, all these processes will cause earthquakes. The transform boundaries only have earthquakes. Now, the west coast of the US, uh, near Los Angeles, uh, all the way up to San Francisco, that sits on a transform boundary and it has a lot of earthquakes. Um, there was a massive earthquake in San Francisco many, many years ago uh, that destroyed the whole city. It had so much energy that the whole city was just flattened. And so they built it up again. Might be silly, but hey, let them build the city if they want to there. But these things, uh, these transform boundaries, and this is the sort of the the biggest transform boundary in the world that we need to worry about. So it's a good good one to remember for exams. Now, there's a video called Plate Boundary TKD. You can access it on OneDrive. Have a watch.
try to learn some of the actions. When we get back to class, I'll get you to show me some. And I do believe I've asked you to do some onto our eLearn site. That brings us to the end of this video, guys. Thanks very much for listening. Have a great night.